Okay, I think we'll start. Um, okay, the reason I was asking earlier on about um, Happy Sabbath to everyone, it's um, morning here, evening for you, So, but it's still Sabbath for both of us. The reason uh, I was asking about if people uh, had a favourite hymn is basically I, I we grew up in the church you know, 30 years ago when everyone used to be, we used to start the congregate, the, sorry, the service with uh, 10, 10 hymns and we'd have different people had their favourites. But I've found uh, since I've been in the church and basically um, I've been blessed because God has given me songs. I said um, when I first came into the, into the uh, Advent movement, um, I had I had Damascus Roads a couple of times. And basically the, the so song which we sang, the, I think the first time I presented anything was He Lives. I serve a risen Saviour. He's in the world today. And because of that, I've always depended on basically God. I, I go to God and, and pray for everything and 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 listen. And basically, that's what I'm trying to get through to everyone here. That um, maybe my experience is a bit different to others. Although I think Angela was taking saying she could hear God talking to her, and so did uh, Theodore. But um, of late, I find I'm getting hymns, and I, I know a lot of hymns, uh, but I've memorised quite a few now as well at the right time. And I think we'll all find if God gives you a hymn that's relevant to you at the time, it it it, it means a lot more. Uh, as I said, he uh, he lives is the, one of the first well the first one I ever learned learned because basically when I came into the Advent Church, I think people I've told a couple of times I was a sportsman. I'd never read a book in my life. I got through um, to year eleven uh, in schooling, and I'd read parts of a book, but I could never sit down and read a whole book. The first book I ever read cover to cover was the Bible. Um, and I remember it was the Good News Bible. And um, I remember after reading the Good News Bible, I was praying, you know, what do I read next? And when I got baptised in, um, I think it was 93, someone gave me a, a book, a small book about the size of Steps to Christ called Powerful Good News. And my human understanding was, well, I read the Good News Bible, Powerful Good News goes together. So I, I tried to start to read it, but it didn't make do anything for me. So I put it down. I was to remember this was one Sabbath afternoon, and I was laying on the couch, and we got a short old um, couch that um, wasn't very comfortable. And I thought, well, I'll, I'll go and lay in bed. And when I went to bed, our bed, uh, my wife had a whole lot of books there, and I just pushed them off to one side, and I and I laid in bed. But what I did do. Was well, I prayed, and the prayer came from the heart. This is actually said just not long after I've been baptized. I said, God, you know I haven't got a clue what I need to do, which way I need to go. I need your help. Please help me to know what I should read. As I was laying in bed, it was like a line came out of my head with a circle, and the circle was around a book called Mind, Character, and Personality by Alan White. So I picked it up and started reading, and I read like 18 pages, which for me was a lot. But again, we're back to we serve a risen saviour. We've got a living God who's actually guiding every one of us if we'll only listen. But we need to come down to the level that he wants us to. And this is why what I'm getting now is uh, well, in my journey anyhow, and as I said, we're all on different journeys. I understand that. But basically what I'm finding is the hymns I'm getting, like this he leadeth me now is what I'm getting at the moment. Uh, and so I've memorized this so I can sing this. Draw Me Nearer was what we sang last week. That was at, at another stage in my Christian walk. And I find God leads me through song and scripture. I always remember one day I was in a, a house next door where we are now. And basically I was, I, was a bit, I woke up a bit depressed for some reason. I don't know why. I'm, I'm not, I don't suffer depression. I don't have problems with that. But I was just upset, I think, because it was cold and it was a, 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 a new house. It was not like it was an old old house, but basically. But when I woke up, the wonder of it all came into my head. And I started to sing the wonder of it all. I think everyone knows that song, hymn 75, the wonder of it all, the wonder that God loves me. And I thought, wow, you know, how can anybody be depressed if you've got a God who loves you so like that? It's just, it's just amazing. So we have a living God, and that's why... Um, if I sound like um, I'm, I, I know too much, it's only because basically I, I'm, I'm only guided in what, I, what I'm saying. I've, I'm, I've always just learned to be honest. So basically what I 
what are my experiences might be different than somebody else's. But basically, we have a living, loving God who's guiding everybody individually. And I'm, I'm sure everyone's walk will be different because we're all in different parts of the world. <laughs> um, and But we have the same God who's guiding us all. And this is why um, I'll sing this song and then we'll start this uh, study. Um, my time because it's Sabbath today and I like to my wife and I are in the country. We're out on 80 acres in um, a place called Little River. And basically, um, I'll just give you a quick background. We used to go to Melbourne, which is half an hour drive from us here on a Sunday, and do our shopping at an organic Victoria Market. And when, when we got home, my wife would be exhausted and sit on the couch, and she couldn't work out what, what was knocking her out. But she traced it down to being the Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi was knocking her around so we end up getting rid of all the wi-fi in the house we got rid i switched my mobile phone off when i was at home because i was running a business for mobile phone and then she was okay and i spent more and more time at home and then i found when i went to town i started to get affected as well so by getting away from it it seemed to um yeah make it worse for me so now we're both very sensitive um my wife looked into it with their special clothing. I'm wearing some of it today. It's got um, a, a silver content, which makes us a Faraday cage. So when we go out or when I go and do shopping, I wear a, a, a hoodie with a lot like a fly wire in the front, which makes me look like a beekeeper, but it stops the Wi-Fi from hitting me. And um, apparently 2, 2.5% of the population have this problem. And I found by being in the country away from it all, uh, it affects us. So we can't, uh, do a lot of things we knew used to do, but we're basically following God's way of living in the country. But anyhow, I'll start this uh, study because we've got uh, a few things to get through today. So I'll be singing, and if everyone else can get their hymn book out and sing along with me, it'd be wonderful. I know we can't all sing at the same time, so uh, if you put yours on mute and I will sing and lead, and when we finish, we'll be all back together again, if that's okay with everyone. So um, as I said, this is the latest song that I'm, uh, hymn that I'm actually been singing, and I, I sing it at different times and my journey. But again, it's coming back to the same old thing that where is your mind and who's got your mind? So if anything starts to try to get into my mind, I'll sing a hymn. It might not be this one. It might be uh, Jesus is all the world to me. It might be something else. But I'm listening because the devil can talk to us, but so can God. And the main one we need to do is, is tune into God's voice. Uh, as Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and right through the Bible, there's being there's being a people being led, and we, I believe, and in that last generation of the 144,000 that follow the Lamb wheresoever He goes, we need to understand what we need to be to be saved and be be able to recognise the the word that's coming our way. So I'll sing now the the song. Okay, He leadeth me. Oh, blessed thought, oh, words with heavenly comfort throw. Whate'er I do, where I be, still tis God's hand that leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me, by his own hand he leadeth me. His faithful follower I would be. For by his hand he leadeth me. Sometimes mid scenes of deepest gloom, Sometimes when he ends bores bloom, By water still or trouble see, Still tis God's hand that leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me, by his own hand he leadeth me. His faithful follower I would be, for by his hand he leadeth me. Lord, I would clasp my hand in thine, nor ever murmur, nor repine. Content whatever lot I see. Since tis God's my God that leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me. By his own hand he leadeth me. His faithful follower I would be. For by his hand he leadeth me. 
And when my task on earth is done, when by God's grace the victory is won, when death's cold wave I will not flee, since God through Jordan leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me, by his own hand he leadeth me. His faithful follower I would be, for by his hand he leadeth me. Amen. Thank you. Okay, today we'll we'll start with a prayer and then we'll start this the study. Our dear, 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 dear Heavenly Father, you know each of us here and we know that you are leading each and every one of us. And Lord, not only leading us, you're guiding this whole world. Those who don't even know you. We think back on the times when we were in this world and didn't want to have anything to do if you or didn't know that we have a living God, God who can guide everyone. Lord, we pray for this group as we study today. We pray that your Holy Spirit will touch each of us to be able to hear you speak through each person here today. We pray that you'll help this study to help us to know how to have a closer walk with you. And Lord, help us to clasp our hand in thine. And be led by your Holy Spirit in all we say and do. We pray for this group. We pray for Theodore, who's not with us. But, Lord, he, I'm sure he's with us in spirit. And, Lord, help him on his journey. Help us all on our journey as we study your word. Bless us, guide us, and be with us. And show us the way, the truth, and the light, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. The study we're doing today, it's basically, again, righteousness by faith in Christ Jesus Christ. So basically, um, and we've sung that hymn, and I said I was asking about the hymn, so I hope everyone will find a closer walk with God, whatever it needs to be. Now, I'm going to read some scriptures here. Um, basically, they're very basic, and I think you'll all know these scriptures very well, and you're probably wondering why I'm re quoting these sort of scriptures. The first one is Math Matthew 18, verses 3 and 5. Thank you, Aaron. Not on screen, and and said and, and and said, verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. Now we're going to read three to five, and then verse four: Whosoever shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And verse five: And whoso shall offend, sorry, and whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. Okay, so as I said, when I first came into the Advent Church, and it was in a place called White Park Chapel in Ascot Vale in Victoria, I'd never opened the Bible before. And, you know, I got in there and basically how how I would study, um, open it. If someone would quote John 3.16, I would actually go to the index. I would go to the book, go to the chapter, go to the verse. And as you can probably imagine, by the time I got there, there are five, five verses ahead of me. And um, because of that, I had this type of um, relationship with God. I, I knew nothing. And basically, I came as a little child and the reason I say this is because I've been blessed so much because of this, because of actually coming with a humble, um, teachable heart. God has, you know, if I tell you all the things God's done in my life, you would um, you would think I'm boasting. But basically, it's it's one that I I did it from then, and I've been Advent now for thirty years, and uh, I do know a lot of hymns. I know a lot of scripture now. Uh, he's led me through song and his word and basically it's it comes at different times and i i i what i'm going to try to get through here today uh, and i always do is try to teach people how to have a living relationship with a living god who basically is guiding everyone if we'll just humble ourselves and come to him with the with the the the, the um the attitude of a child of and the awe that we need to have when we come to the god Okay, we're going to go to Matthew 19, 14. A lot of these are going to be a repetition, but um, I just want to just push through what we're 
what I'm um, getting here, and I, I think everyone knows. If anyone wants to comment, you can comment any time you want, and I don't know if anyone's had this experience or these experiences. I'm I'm happy to uh, just talk whatever we need to do. Okay, Matthew 19, 14. But Jesus said, Suffer little children and forbid them not to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Who is going to be our best friend in heaven? Who is our best friend here? Everyone should know this one, the answer, surely. <laughs> amen, amen. This is why we should never be, um, n- n- we should be calling his name. When we're in trouble, we're going to call his name. So in, in, in the good time, we should be calling his name as well. And this is what he wants. He wants us to be in, I don't know if people can remember, can you remember when you're a baby or when a child and depending on your parents? And I always remember once um, we, my, my wife's from Malaysia. We went to the orangutan rehabilitation center in Malaysia. And at one stage there, we're walking through this centre and I had my son, Brandt, who was uh, maybe three, three or four, and somehow we got separated um, and there ended up a orangutan between us. And all of a sudden, he started to cry because he couldn't get to me. I couldn't get to him because there's a orangutan in the middle. It wasn't the big, big ones, but it was about a metre high and it was one that he, he just saw he needed he needed me. Um, and, I, and we got out of it okay, but... That's probably an example of where we are. For us, what I'm trying to get through and to to make people understand is, do we realize when God is not with us? And that's the most important thing. And, you know, this is why this study and every study I always do, I I just try to bond people to God, to basically to to call on him and ask him uh, as your friend, as your best friend, because basically he is your best friend. And, um I know. I, I was just thinking this morning. There was a lady who um, who picked up some cows. A young girl. Um, she would have been in her thirties. And I talked to her about God. And whenever I talk to people about God, I share my testimonies. Now, my testimonies are pretty uh, amazing. Um, I had the heavens open, so basically I've had Damascus roads. But I, I speak to these people because I want them to realise there is a living God who takes care of everything. And I saw this girl sometime later, and she said, oh, I prayed, but I didn't hear anything. And I thought, well, I, 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 don't, I don't know why, but basically I'm, I pray that she will. But others I've spoken to with the same situation, and they've come back to me and said, yes, things have happened, and they realize there is a living God. Moving along, we're on to Mark 10, 14 and 15. Please, Darren. Okay, Mark 10. As I said, a lot of these will be repetition. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Very 15. And 15 is, Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall not enter therein. Now, it's... um, is it, is it, are we doing the same thing today? Are we displeasing God by not bringing our, 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 the children to him? Do we try to make it too hard? Uh, uh, you know, uh, a, we, we've, we've been in a few different groups here. We were um, basically mainstream uh, Adventism here for most of our first lot of years. And then we went home, home to church for a while with some people who are homeschooling their kids. Uh, we went to um, uh, Reformed Church once at one stage for a short while, but basically I believe all were by God's leading. And um, at one stage there we went to a group which is part of this group, well, not part of this group, but was part of this group as well. Um, and they were studying a lot of the Pip and Joe messages, and I, I went to one of the men and said, um, well, can you explain this? Because I, I came in fresh from, from not knowing anything. And he said, oh, you have to talk to my wife. And I thought, oh, okay. And I just went to another man and I said to this other man, can you explain what is going on? And he said, oh, you have to talk to my wife. And I thought, wow, this must be a, a woman's mess- message or something. I don't know. So I went to one of them and one of the ladies said, oh, what you need to do is you need to get uh, Pippinger's 96 uh, theses and you need to read all those. Then you need to do this and then you need to do this. And I thought, okay. I, I tried to uh, read them. I think I got up to about 40 and I, I just couldn't. Again, it's probably a bit like I was saying with the hymns. If God gives you something, it's not everyone sees it the same, but it's one that we should all be pointing to Christ. This, this, what we're looking at here, for the kingdom, uh, the, the, we need to, the kingdom is like 
we have to come to God as a little children. That's what God is basically taught, bringing us to here. You know, as verse 14 said, and Jesus saw, saw it, was much displeased, and said to him, Suffer the little children, come unto me, for forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. So we need to be always going to Christ, each one of us, and actually and pointing to him. Everything should be pointing. If we're not, we start pointing um, any other direction, we're going in the wrong direction. We can get deceived, as we, we know, all the way through. Okay, now Luke 18, 16 and 17. Luke 18, 16. But Jesus called them unto him and said, Suffer little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Okay, there's the same thing over again and again. So what are all are we? Are we the little children? I'm happy to be one of the children. <laughs> and I, I do come to God as a child. As I said, I, I, I do know a little bit, maybe not as much as everyone else here, but I know a little bit. But every time I come, I come to God and say, God, help me. And I, I, I wait and I listen. Now, Angela mentioned the other week that she hears God speaking. Now, what about Lucille and William? Do you ever hear God speaking to you and guiding you? Yes, I do. Amen. And William, what about you? Yes, I have. Amen. Okay. Well, this is this is what I'm I I because I when I talk to people sometimes and say I I I I'm listening and God is guiding, they all think you're a bit nuts. And I know I know there's the other side of this where a lot of people hear God talking to them, but who is it? We don't know. And I I'm not here to judge. The main thing is. We, we know through the word, by their fruit you'll know them. And this is why we need to be basically studying the word, coming together in this. And we need to judge. We don't judge uh, to condemn, but we need to judge. If I'm saying something wrong, I'm happy that people point me out. And that's one that I, I think we all should be the same with this this this, this um, character of a child. You know, if you, when, when your children were wrong, I, I always remember my older son, Brant, who's now, who just turned 36 this week, when he was a little boy, he worked out that he could come to me in anything and say, Dad, is that true? And he knew I would never lie to him. And he would he knew I would say, it's yes, it's right, or no, it's wrong, or I'm not sure I have to check. So he had that. Um, and I was saying to someone this week how, how I was blessed. I, I came to Adventist, and I said, 30 years ago, my old youngest son's 33 and the other one's 36. So they must have been three and six. And because of the revelations I had, I gave away my 30 years of basketball. I gave away my 20 years of martial arts. Um, we sold our house in Flemington, which was four kilometres from Melbourne CBD, and we moved out to 80 acres of land, which we knew nothing about, but we learned about country living, and we did country living with our children. And my two children, we didn't have a TV for 10 years. I, I think we, we, we bought a TV when September 11 came along and the boys were 10 years old just to watch what was going on. But, but before that, we were just together as a family. And um, people comment on the character of my, our children. We used to do our Bible study every morning, every night, and we, we spent time with God and with each other. And it was wonderful. And our boys, are, yeah, they've gone their own way now. Um, I'm hoping they'll turn around and have more time with God in the future. But... It's been wonderful. And again, back to what we're talking about here in the study, being as a little child. So if we um, we'll, we'll just read verse 17. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. And, you know, can we all remember when we were little children? <laughs> it's... Um, you know, that, that dependence, and it's one that I, I've found in my journey, this has been wonderful. Like, I've got a, a king of the universe that I can go and call him my father. And, you know, we're his children. And, and, and you know, when we realize and organize our lives around this, life's wonderful. Like, he, he gives me Bible verses. He gives me songs. He, he gives me all things. I, I, I know he gave me some, some Bible verses um, Amos 5, 7, 5, 8, sorry, at one stage there. And I think the next couple of days later, a Jehovah's Witness turned up and was, wanted to explain to me um, something about um, Revelation 21, no more death or pain. And I, I quoted Amos 5, 8. Um, now, unto him does that, that, that um, <laughs> pulled it out of my head again, that created the seven stars in Orion. 
and turn the shadow of death into the morning and cause it for the day, makes the day dark with night and pours the waters in the sea and pour them upon the face of the earth to the Lord is his name. Now, he didn't pour, give me this to, um, to make any uh, disregard to the, um, Jehovah's Witness, but he just gave them to me to actually explain to them that there are people who are doing their Bible studies, I, I believe. I didn't actually, wasn't there to battle, because one of my favourite Bible verses I've learned over the years is First Thessalonians 5, 9, for God has not appointed us to wrath, but they will obtain salvation for our Lord Jesus Christ. So it's something that God is guiding us all. And again, we see this right through the Bible over and over again. He'll give people things and then see what they do with it. And God is guiding us. And we, if we can walk as Jesus walked, is the, the ultimate goal of every Christian. Okay, we're going to go now over to First Peter, chapter two, one to three. First Peter, uh, two. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speaking. Verse two, as newborn babes, desiring the sincere milk of the word, that ye may be a may grow thereby. And verse three, if so be, ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Okay, just stop there for a minute. So, okay, I think that those verses basically are pretty basic. I think all of us here have probably read those over the years. But again, put them together with what we're studying today. This is what God is after. He's after a people who are happy to follow, and I'm happy to follow. <laughs> and I, I believe, uh, what about everyone else? You're happy to follow God's leading. And when you see God's leading in, in these type of situations, it, it it's amazing how wonderful a God we have. And so, so, you know, salvation is easy if we're obedient. There was a, uh, a commentator, I remember his name now, who was actually reading the, uh, Tucker Carlson, who was saying, was to do an interview with a lady and uh, saying he was reading the Bible for the first time with what's happening in the world. And his words were, I'm only up to Jeremiah, but he said, it's, it's just it's such an amazing book. He said, I can't believe it. I'm in my 50s and the first time I'm ever reading the Bible. And here we go. He's a, a man who's honest. And he said, but I'm, I'm, I'm just amazed. He said, when the, when the people, God's people are obedient, everything goes well, but they're always being disobedient. He said, I can't understand it. He said, it's only up to Jeremiah what's happening. So this is exactly what we need to do. And again, we have to learn how to keep ourselves in the love of God. And if there was going to be another question later on, I'll, I'll ask at the end of this um, thing. Is I've got two questions. Basically, um, you know, how do we keep ourselves in the love of God? We can have a think about that one. And what do you say to people who are fresh who don't know anything how do you explain to them the plan of salvation that god's got for us okay we're going to read now first peter 2 verses 4 to 10 which is continuing what we have, we have just been reading now to whom coming as unto a living stone disallowed indeed of men but chosen of god and precious verse 5 ye also as living stones are built on a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Verse 6, whereby also it is contained in the scriptures, behold, a lay in Zion, a chief cornerstone, a correct, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. We'll keep reading verse 7. Unto you, therefore, which believes, he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders of disallow, the same as made the head of the corner. Just stop there for a minute. Okay, this is just basically what we've just been told. Just go back to verse uh, seven, seven, please, uh, Aaron. So this is exactly what I'm, I'm getting at here. Now, to us, the word of God, the songs we're singing are precious. And I, 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 I love singing along. You know, I'm, I'm in my car a lot of the time driving between uh, different places and I've, I've got the conflict series that I listen to. But a lot of times I'll switch it off and just talk to God and listen. Other times I'll, um, I'll, I'll pick up Bible verses. So to me, song and the word is precious to me. But when I go to those that, are, that don't know anything about God, it's what this Bible verse is talking about. You know, how do you explain it to them? 
You know, do we have this glow in us that explains it? And I, I, you know, I, I talk to people who, who don't know anything, and I say, oh, I really feel sorry for you. And they look at me like, what? <laughs> um, because they just got no idea. And I, I, can, I can relate. I was there for 42 years of my life. The devil was using me, and I didn't even realize it for 42 years of my life. So I can relate to where they are. But now I believe it's just it's the work of every Christian to reflect Christ. And this is what we need to be understanding and, and knowing how to do it. And how can we do it? We say, God, help me to do it, because that's the only way we can do it, because we can't do it ourselves. Yeah, on to verse 8. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. I'll keep reading on verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praise of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvellous light. Last verse, verse 10, please. Which in times past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. So, well, that relates to me. I'm not sure about everyone else, but it relates to me because as I was in the world, wine, woman and song and everything was um, party time. But And I didn't realise I was just basically uh, on the wrong side. It was only when I opened the word for the first time I realised the war that was going on for my mind and what we need, what I needed to do. So basically, um, well, I can relate to these verses we've just read. I'm not sure if everyone else can understand, but basically it's um, it's where we are we're on this journey and we need to be talking to god and, and listening because we have a living god who's actually going to guide us home okay now i'm going to go to faith and works now uh, page 64 we did read this last week and this is probably why i'm back to it again because um i i realized um it's something that's important and that, that this is um the chapter the quality of our faith and this uh, this a few paragraphs we're going to be reading here is the simplicity of being saved and i'll read it uh, now he who will lay hold of christ's righteousness need not wait one moment that he himself may blot out his own sins he need not wait until he has made a suitable repentance before he may take hold upon christ's righteousness we do not understand the matter of salvation. It is just as simple as A, B, C. And it's very, that's true, isn't it? But we don't, under, don't understand it. Now, how is it that a man will repent? Is it anything of himself? No, because the natural heart is at enmity with God. Then how can the natural heart stir itself up to repentance? when it has no power to do so. What is it that brings men to repentance? It is Jesus Christ. How does he bring men to repentance? There are a thousand ways that he may do this. And I think I'm sure everyone here has probably got a testimony they can share. I said, I've got many testimonies. Like when I, I find sometimes when I start telling people I need to learn to stop sometimes because I've got many, many testimonies and some wonderful testimonies that people have shared with me where, you know, they've um, had, you know, their Damascus roads and their different experiences and how the Bible's lit up in front of them. So I've got many, many testimonies that I can share. So as I said, the living God is very living to me. Okay, just reading on. The God of heaven is working upon human minds at all time. An invitation is given in the word of God. And it is not only given there, but it is given by all those who believe on Jesus Christ and are revealing Christ in their characters. And there's probably the, uh, something we all have to recognize. If we're not, our character is not being changed into his likeness, we have to ask ourselves why and go to him like I do. Search me, O Lord, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me. I go that I often ask that prayer of God. Okay. They may not preach a discourse. They may not come directly to, to a person and speak to him in regard to his condition of impenance. Yet such one sees when brought into connection with any of the disciples of Jesus Christ that there is something there that he does not have. The Pharisees saw 
that there was something in the disciples that they could not interpret. They saw something wonderful and were settled in the minds that the disciples had been listening to Jesus and they had learned their lessons from him. Okay, the question today is, what about us today? Is that the same for for um, for us? It's amazing when we when we read this because basically that that's exactly how I see things at the moment. You know, we need to be listening to God and being God, and exactly this is what she's talking about here. It's going to be us fruit at the end of time. The hundred and forty four thousand follow the Lamb wheresoever He goes, and this is why I I spend a lot of time talking to God and then listening. Because he'll give us things like uh, that song, He Leadeth Me. And basically, I, I realized by seeing that song, you know, the depth that's in there. And it's for me and for anybody else who will actually be willing to open it up and listen to, to his voice. Okay, reading on. There are impressions that are going on, going forth all the time. There is an atmosphere that surrounds the human soul. That, and that atmosphere is a heavenly atmosphere or a hellish atmosphere. There are but two distinct lines. Either we are on Christ's side of the question or on the enemy side. And if we are continually drawing rays of divine light from glory, angels of God are round about us. And there is an atmosphere that surrounds the human soul. Our very attitude, our very words witness genuine conversion to all who come within the sphere of our influence. The spirit and the bride say come, and let him that heareth say come, and let him that is a thirst come. It's something that, um, again, this is something we all have to share and understand where we are and what we're doing. And um, basically, God is guiding a people. Just going to read this last paragraph of this um, book. Now that, the, now that we are branches of the living vine, we will be nourished by the sap that flows from the vine. It follows all the, it flows all the time to every branch, and every branch will bear fruit to the glory of God. It is your Father's good pleasure that we ye bear much fruit. Well then, what is our position? It must be a position of living faith. Okay, I think everyone's probably had something to do with a tree at different times, and sometimes a branch will get broken off. And what happens to the branch? It slowly withers and then dies. For us, and I've asked, asked this question before, you know, do you recognize when you're not walking with God? And actually it's something that we pray now after many years that we probably don't have that happen too often. We know the evil one can deceive us and distract us at times and... um I was in the um, in the um, hardware store yesterday, and I bought a whole lot of things. And um, I bought um, five fittings for for our water hoses here. And um, I had some dog food, I had some salt, and a whole lot of things in the pouch. And I, when I checked it out, I got them all through. And they checked out f- f- four, because one of them must have been inside the bag. When I unpacked, I realized I had five. And they were only talking $2.56 or something. I think they were. So it wasn't a big deal. So I, I reported to the man, and the man was a Christian man. He said, oh, just keep it. I said, no, I don't want to keep it. You put it, take it back, and um, I'll, I'll, um, I'll, I'll, buy, I'll buy another next one. It wasn't It was a spare one anyhow. So, again, a little test, I suppose. Um, does it really matter, $2.56? But, yes, it does matter. I think it's something that... God is teaching me. I think he's teaching everyone that we have to learn to be honest. If we knew, if I didn't know about it, it would be a different story, but I knew about what's going on and we go from there. Okay, so I hope everyone can relate to those messages there. We're going to go now to Selected Messages, Book 1, page 331 and 335. And um, we're going to start with, uh, where are we going to start? Yeah, 331. Okay, again, come and seek and find. Again, it's so simple. And this is why we need to keep salvation as simple as God has made it. Come and follow me. This is what everybody was saying. Come and seek and find. Okay, it is impossible for man to save himself. He may deceive himself in regard to this matter, but he cannot save himself. 
Christ's righteousness alone can avail for his salvation and for this is the gift of God. This is the wedding garment in which you may appear as a welcome guest at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Let faith take hold on Christ without delay and you will be a new creature in Jesus, a light to the world. Christ is uh, is called the Lord our righteousness <clears throat> and through faith each one should say the Lord my righteousness. When faith lays hold upon this gift of God, the praise of God will be upon our lips and we shall be able to say to others, behold the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. Interesting, I put that on uh, a, a message this week about trying to get to the sanctuary, uh, how this was, a you know, we, we talk of this verse many times, but I, I put it on a, a Facebook group I'm a part of, which is... Um, Catholic, Orthodox, Protestant discussion group. And um, it's something in the sanctuary we don't touch on too often. I think it's something we need to. So I put this in and then asked where it started and uh, pointed out how this is the sanctuary, the, the lamb in the sanctuary. We'll read on. We shall then be able to tell the lost concerning the plan of salvation, that while the world was lying under the curse of sin, the Lord presented terms of mercy to the fallen and hopeless sinner and revealed the value and meaning of his grace. Grace is unmerited favour. The angels who know nothing of sin do not understand what it is to have grace exercised toward them. But our sinful calls for the exercise of grace from a merciful God. It was grace that sent our Saviour to seek us as wanderers and bring us back to the fold it's amazing isn't it how god is guiding us and doing everything for us you will just realize it have you a sense of want in your soul do you hunger and thirst after all this is something i think if, we, if we're doing this and actually have a sense of where we're up to i believe this is will make us understand more and more and we, we ask god he will actually help us to be able to do it now, this is the evidence that Christ has wrought upon your heart and created this sense of need. In order that he may be sought after to do those things for you through the endowment of his Holy Spirit, which it is impossible for you to do for yourself. The Lord specifies no conditions except that you hunger for his mercy, desiring his counsel and long for his love. Ask. The asking makes it manifest that you realize your necessity. And if you ask in faith, you will receive. Amen. The Lord has pledged his word and it cannot fail. That you feel and know that you are a sinner is sufficient argument in asking for his mercy and compassion. The condition upon which you may come to God is not that you shall be holy but that you shall ask God to cleanse you from all sin and purify you from all iniquity then why wait longer why not take God at his word and say here Lord I give myself to thee tis all that I can do and again, I think this is something, one of my prayers, I always pray with, Lord, you know, who are we to come to you? Um, and um, I think in our hand we bring simply to that cross that we cling. And it's a matter of, uh, we have to realise just how much our dependence, and actually once we've had a taste, we'll want more, I believe. If Satan comes to cast his shadow between you and God, accusing you of sin, tempting you to distrust God, and doubt his mercy, say, I cannot allow my weakness to come between me and God, and he is my strength. My sins, which are many, are laid upon Jesus, my divine substitute and sacrifice. Nothing in my hand I bring, simply to thy cross I cling. Again, I, I think everyone's probably been through this. Have you ever noticed how the devil will bring a sin to your head and into your mind and you say, well, God, you know, please forgive me or, or maybe God brings it and then you ask forgiveness? 
I don't know if anyone's been through this experience, and then later on it will come again and again. If we ask God forgiveness the first time, does that mean it's forgiven? I believe it is. If it's, if it's confessed from the heart, basically God will forgive us. So then God will teach us how to um, understand that God is merciful and does forgive us our sins. So if the devil brings our sin to us again, we can say, no, we've already confessed that sin. It's gone. Okay, anyone can talk about that one if they want to as well. But anyway, well, well, that's how I believe it is. No man can look within himself and find anything in his character that will recommend him to God or make his acceptance sure. It is only through Jesus, whom the Father gave for the life of the world, that the sinner may feel access, find access to God. Sorry, Jesus alone is our redeemed Redeemer, our Advocate and Mediator. In him is our only hope of full pardon, peace and righteousness. It is by virtue of the blood of Christ that the sin-stricken soul can be restored to soundness. Christ is the fragrance, the holy incense, which makes your petition acceptable to the Father. Then can you say, just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thy, thou bids me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. And this is something we need to be doing often. And, and you know, again, as I'm saying, it's a matter of um, working out your our own salvation with fear and trembling because basically I would say to people, you know, this is a one-on-one -on -one relationship. Okay, when, we, when we're together like this little group here, you're where, here, I can you can see me, I can't see you, but I can see you here. Um, I, I don't have to make any pretensions. I can just say what I'm saying. But when you're on your own and talking to God, this is why I can never understand. When I was talking to Theodore, he was telling me about different groups are doing different things. And I used to say to him, no, this, that doesn't make sense. Like if they're doing something that, you know, that is wrong and he can see it, you know, that they do the other people think that God can't see it. It just doesn't make sense. And that was why, you know, you can't preach the third angel's message if you don't have preach the first one. And the first one, fear God is, and this is where everything starts to be a child. We, we need to have that fear of God in us. And it's basically, um, yeah, it's amazing how it works out. But anyway, we're, we're, we'll keep reading on. Coming to Jesus does not uh, require severe mental effort and agony. It is simply accepting the terms of salvation that God has made plain in his word. The blessing is free to all. The invitation is, ho, everyone that thirsteth, Come ye to the waters, and he that have no money, come ye buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread, and your labour for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Isaiah 51, 1 and 2. It's interesting. This is why I keep saying to people, you know, we, we go to God as um, as, as our one and one, you know. And I, I, I found when I talk to God, you know, I, 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 I always think of the, um, Hebrews 4, 13, neither is there a creature not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open under the eye of him of whom we have to do. It's something, when I'm talking to God, it's a one-on-one, -on -one, me and him. And it's one that, you know, I'm, I was in bed this morning, I was talking and, and we're listening, and basically it's, you know, I want him to give me the words. I know he won't. It's the same as actually so waking up some morning and saying, God, I want to surrender my life to you. I want you to take care, take full control of everything. I know he never will because he will always give us the benefit of our own individuality. But I tell you what, when I do that prayer, the day goes very, very good until I go off the path land he has for us. He has a plan for us. And this is what I believe well, as we journey this earth. Basically, God has got a, a way um, for us to go. I know there's the, the Bible verse, of, there's a way to seem right on demand, right, that way there is a way of death. That's true. But God's way 
is the way unto salvation and eternal life through Jesus Christ. This is what we all have to understand. And as I said, when we get a taste of it, like that, as I said, that, that prayer I've, I do quite often in the morning, God, I want to surrender my whole life to you, my mind, my everything. He does it. He'll help us. And we just need to do it more often. And then listen when we're going left or right. And, you know, if something comes in your head that you don't want there, just say, God, take it away. And, and, and again, we, we're, we're on this journey here, but we have a God who's going to take care of everything. Okay. Righteousness found in Christ. I'll keep reading on. Then come and seek and find. The reservoir of power is open, is full of and free. Come with humble hearts, not thinking that you must do some good work to merit the favour of God, or that you must make yourself better before you can come to Christ. You are powerless to do good and cannot better your condition. Apart from Christ, we have no merit, no righteousness. Our sinfulness, our weakness, our human imperfection make it impossible that we should appear before God unless we are clothed in Christ's spotless righteousness. So, amen. We are to be found in him, not having our own righteousness, but the righteousness which is of Christ. Then, in the name of, of, of the above, every name, the only name given among men, whereby men may can be saved, claim the promise of God, saying, Lord, forgive my sin. I put my hand into thy hand for help, and I must have it or perish, I now believe. The Saviour says to the repenting sinner, no man cometh unto the Father but by me, John fourteen six. And him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. I am thy salvation. It reminds me of actually uh, Philippians, sorry, sorry, Philippians 3, 9, and be found in him. Not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. <clears throat> I remember memorizing this Bible verse. Wow, it must have been. My boys were young. We went to a uh, a camp meeting, with which I went away on a holiday, and I memorized that Bible verse, and I never realized how much depth there was in one Bible verse. It's a beautiful Bible verse. It's Philippians 3, 9. And be found in him, him, Jesus Christ, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law. So Adventists, we're talk, call, as called legalists. But that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. We went to a place way out in the country somewhere. I can't remember where it was, um, but we had our boys with us, Jeannie, my wife and myself. And we were on coming to Sabbath, so we start looking for a place to go. And the, the, the mainstream church was like an hour drive away. And we were in a shop, and someone said, oh, there's a group that meet in a house somewhere. Um, and they work, worship on a Saturday. And I thought, oh, okay. Well, we found out who they were, and well, so where they were, and we went up finally. Yeah. When we turned up, um, they end up being Seventh-day Adventist Reform. Um, I, I go wherever God sends me. I've got nothing against anybody. So anyhow, when we got there that day, um, they didn't have a preacher. So they were reading out of Review and Herald, uh, a chapter. I can't remember what the chapter was now. But it was just when I'd memorized Philippians 3.9. And the chapter they were reading out of Review and Herald was exactly Philippians 3.9. So when they finished reading, I, they said, has anybody got any comments? And I put my hand up and I said, um, what you've just read is Philippians 3.9. And we, of course, because they follow the Bible as well, we opened up the Bible and basically there it was, Philippians 3.9. So again, another manifestation of how God is guiding us. And when we see this, see, that was probably more for me than anyone else or maybe for the group as well, to put it to God puts things together. And when God puts things together, that's what we all need. We want to be part of what God has planned for us. So um, we had a Sabbath with those people. I don't know who, uh, you know, they were, so they, were, they were Adventist people. They were, um, we had a good day together. And basically just God is showing us. And that's been probably one of my va favorite verses uh, ever since the last 20 years, something years ago now. But God is guiding every one of us if we'll just do our part. Okay, time ticking by, so I'll keep reading on. When you respond to the drawing of Christ, amen, 
and join yourself to him. Amen. You manifest saving faith. To talk of religious things is a casual way, in a casual way. To pray for spiritual blessings without real soul hunger and living faith avails little. The wandering crowd that pressed close about Jesus realized no accession to vital power from the contact. But when the poor suffering woman who for 12 years had been an invalid in her great need put forth her hand and touched the hem of his garment, she felt the healing virtue. Hers was the touch of faith. And Christ Christ recognized that touch. He knew that virtue had gone out of him from him. And turning about in the throng, he asked, Who touched me? Surprised at such a question. Okay, I'll just stop there for a minute. Can you imagine this situation? We know this. I think we all know this story very, very well. That like Jesus walking through the crowd and everyone's touching him. And... Um, then Jesus says, who touched me? Now, is that the same as us today? Are we doing the same thing? Is everyone touching Jesus? But, you know, who um, who is really touching him with faith? And this is what I believe we need to get through to, to eat to any all of us, that we really need that touch of faith. And um, we know this story, how this woman you know, came to him and, and basically she, she told what, what had gone on. Again, you can see God working. And um, when I look and listen to the word, you know, we're so blessed with the conflict series that um, I, I, I listen to it all the time. Um, and basically um, we, we need to be touching with that open, honest heart of a little child. And God, help me. And if we do, he will never, ever let us down. He is leading a people through to eternity. And basically what we need to do is just do our part, what he says, which is just, it's common sense. I think anyone's had children, anyone's had a best friend realizes how much we rely on our best friends or, and you know, we may be disappointed if they do something we don't like. Um, and you know, again, we have lots of different friends. I'll read, I'll read on. Um, surprise at the question, the disciples answered, Master. The multitudes throng thee, and askest thou who touched me? Again, this this is this is the the innocence of the disciples. We we can see this here. We've got honest people here. Like you know, it's it's not a silly question. Everyone's touching him now. He's asking who touched me. They didn't understand, and Jesus said, "Somebody have touched me, for I perceive that virtue has gone out of me." And when the woman saw that she was not hid. She came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. Okay, this is an example for us to do. And he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith have made thee whole. Go in peace. He says that to us today, doesn't he? The faith which avails to bring us is virtual is, is vir- virtual contact with Christ expresses on our part supreme preference, perfect reliance, entire consecration. This faith works by love and purifies the soul. It works in the life of the follower of Christ through obedience to God's commandments. He, for love to God and love to man will be the result of virtual connection with Christ. If any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Isn't it amazing how wonderful it is when we read this? I, I, and, I, and again, I, I suppose it's something we've, we've been reading here as well. I, I love it when I'm listening to I've listened to the conflict series over and over again, and I'm listening to Desire of Ages again at the moment. I'm, I'm just amazed at how I can actually be saying to myself, isn't this wonderful? I've listened to it like a hundred times, but it's it, it's something that um, it, it it is wonderful. It's a matter of actually this this is the life we we need to be living and where we're going. So basically, it's um, we don't start enjoy if we're, if we're not enjoying. We're not of His as we just read. Jesus says, "I am the vine; ye are the branches." John fifteen five. Can we conceive a more 
intimate relations than this implies. The fibres of the branch are identical with those of the vine. The communication of life, strength and nourishment from the trunk to the branches is unobstructed and constant. The root sends its nourishment through the branches, such is the believer's relation to Christ. If he abides in Christ and draws his nourishment from him, but his spiritual relation between Christ and his soul can be established only through the exercise of personal faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. Hebrews 11, 6. For it is faith that connects us with the power of heaven and brings us strength from, for coping with the powers of darkness. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. You can see why I was asking earlier on how um, we need to be basic, know when our connection is there and when our connection is not there. And I, I don't want not never to have the connection not there. This is why I, I, I'm, I've got my way of keeping in touch, and that's why I was asking the question later on if anyone can share their, their way and what they're doing. Okay, faith familiarizes the soul with the existence and presence of God and living with an eye single to the glory of God. More and more we discern the beauty of his character, the excellence of his grace. Our souls become strong in spiritual power for we are breathing the atmosphere of heaven and realizing that God is our right hand, that we shall not be moved. We are rising above the world, beholding him who is the chief among 10,000, the one altogether lovely. And by beholding, we are becoming changed into his image. So we know in the last days, we basically need to be like Christ. And it's basically only going to be that that's going to get us through. And it's something that we have to understand also um, that we can't do it. We need to basically, excuse me, we need to actually be going to God and say, God, help me to do it. And that basically um, he will. He will actually show us. And it's a matter of um, if he's not, we have to be asking why. And, you know, he is our best friend. I can, uh, when I think about my journey and, you know, when I'm going through different things and when even when trials come my way, there's a reason for it. As I said, even that small one, um, about the little two dollar part of of I bought from the hardware store, you know, is it worth worrying about? Like the man would have been willing to give it to me. I said, no, look, take it back. I'm, I'm rather not. And you know, we've got examples like Daniel. You know, Daniel, they couldn't find anything wrong with him, that he did anything wrong. He didn't steal. He paid his taxes. He did everything he needed to do, and he walked with God. And basically, if we walk with God, I, I believe nothing will be able to to fluster us or, or um, change us, basically. We will recognise it. Again, it'll come back to our choice. You know, would I would I um, worry about $2? I said, I've, I've had this problem once before with pulling some branches off a tree that weren't mine. So I've, I've been taught a lesson. So from now on, I want to be faultless before God. And the only way I can do it is by basically um, spending time with God and him showing us what I need to do. We've got one more reading and then basically um, a couple of Bible verses and we're finished. So I hope we're not going to go too far over. So I'm going to read now from the Everlasting Covenant. Um, and basically I'll um, – sorry, I just get my book out to see what I'm up to. But basically we're going to be uh, – I'm going to be going down a little bit further now. We're going to go down to uh, where – just down here. Let us remember that God does not choose any man because – of his good character. For we also uh, were aforetime foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful, hating one another. But when the kindness of God, our Saviour, and his love toward men appeared, not by works done in righteousness, which we did ourselves, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration, renewing of the Holy Ghost, 
this is the most important thing we under, have to all have to understand is that all this controversy about the Godhead and the God, Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is basically what we all need to guide us. And if we're not, again, I keep pushing, if we're not recognizing his leading, we have to ask ourselves why. And ask God why, because God will always, he loves us to be that little child who comes and says, God, am, am, am I doing something wrong? And he will show us, which he poured out upon us richly through Jesus Christ, our Saviour, that being justified by grace, we might be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. And it's amazing. It's something um, I spoke to a friend of mine who's um, having a problem with alcohol and who's the same age as me. I've known him for 50 years. He's got his um, problems, but um, by God's grace, we'll uh, get through. And um, we basically... Uh, I said to him, he said, I, I can't fathom eternal life. You know, how do you live forever? And I said, well, you know, we, we're not living in this body. So we go on to the next page, um, please, Aaron. God chooses men. Here we go. God chooses men, not for what they are, but for what he can make them. Isn't that amazing? I don't know about everyone else here, but it amazes me when I think about where I was to where where we are today, and basically what we're talking about right now. And there is no limit to what he can make of even the meanest and most depraved. If, if they are only willing and believing his word, a gift cannot be forced upon one. And therefore, those who would re receive God's righteousness and the inheritance of righteousness must be willing to receive it. Amen. All things are possible to him that believeth. God can do exceedingly abundantly above all that he asks or think. If we but believe his word, which effectually worketh in them that believe. The Pharisees were much more respectable people than the publicans and harlots. And yet Christ said that those who go into the kingdom of heaven before they did, and the reason was that the Pharisees trusted in themselves and disbelieved God, while the publicans and harlots believed the Lord and yielded themselves to him. Again, what we've been talking about, how we need to yield to him and talk to him and walk with him. So with a, a Jacob and Esau, Esau was an infidel. He regarded the word of God with contempt. Jacob was no better by nature but he believed the promise of God, which is able to make the believer a partaker of the divine nature. Isn't it amazing how <clears throat> we, we see here? Do we see ourselves in him? I know I do. <laughs> okay. Next page, please. Uh, next section. Oh, you want me to press it? Okay. God chose Jacob in the same way that he does everyone else. Be blessed be the God and Father of our Lord, Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he have chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. We can do this if we spend time with God, can't we? It's a matter of actually just spending time that he helps us not to fall. Like if we're holding, it's like if you remember, if, you have, if you've had children, when you've got your children, if they fall and you're holding their hand, they don't, they don't hit the ground. You hold them up. This is what we have to learn as uh, in our lessons of life, that God is going to lead us, and if we will just hold them to him, like uh, he leadeth me, Lord, I will clasp my hand in thine. This is what we need to be understanding. When I sing that song from my heart, I realize that this is the God that is guiding us home. We are chosen in Christ, and since all things were created in Christ, and in him all things consist, it is evident that we are not required to get ourselves into Christ, but only to acknowledge him and abide in him by faith. There is no more partiality in the choice of Jacob before he was born than there is in the choice of all others. The choice is not arbitrary, but it, but in Christ, and in none reject the spurn Christ, None will be lost. Uh, that's where we're going to finish for that one. Um, I'll read the last part. I think it's a little hymn that they've got. How rich and the great the gift, how free tis only ask. 
it shall be given. Tis only knock, and thou shalt see the opening door that leads to heaven. O then arise, and take the good, so full and freely pre-offered thee, remembering that it cost the blood of him who died on Calvary. Amen. So basically, the, um, we'll finish there. That's basically, again, a lessons of life that God is teaching us. Now, I'm going to finish with a couple of Bible verses here. And I think these couple of Bible verses everybody will know. It's Jude 21 and 24. So um, I often finish my conversations with uh, other Christians with this Bible verse. And um, very interesting Bible verse. Actually, I think everyone probably knows this. I remember actually when I first came into the church, 30 years ago, so I knew nothing, and basically God gave me Jude 24. And I and one of the brothers who'd been brought up at me says, how did you find that Bible verse? And I said, well, God showed me. So basically, and it, probably what I needed at the time, I, well, we'll get to it in a minute, but basically um, we have a living God, and this is what I, I keep asking and telling people. We, If we just talk, walk, and talk with him, he will walk and talk about, and, and we we also have to keep his commandments. Do we love me? Keep my commandments, and and how do we do that? You God help me to do it. It's as simple as that. Now, Jude twenty one. Keep yourself in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Now, this is the question I was going to ask. I did ask earlier on. How do you keep yourself in the love of God? Anybody got uh, answers to this one? I do it by basically singing singing songs. I basically at different times, and it's not, I don't go around singing all the time. It's just different times I'm driving along. As I said, I've got the conflict series on a USB. So the conflict series, I think everybody would know, Patriarchs and Prophets, Prophets and Kings, Desire of Ages, Acts of the Apostles, and uh, Great Controversy. I've got it on a USB. So I plug it into my car, and as I'm driving along, I'm listening to it. And to me, how do I keep myself in love of God? Apparently, the people who look for counterfeit money, I don't know if everybody knows how they how they can pick the difference. Anybody know this story about how you can pick the difference between counterfeit money and, and the real money? By knowing the true money. Show them the real bill first. Amen. Amen. What they do, they keep looking at the real one. They keep looking at the real one. So if a counterfeit comes up, that's it. Exactly right. Very well, good, ladies. Um, it's something that... Um, I, well, you know, what is the conflict series? Those five books, what is it? It's basically a running commentary of the Bible, isn't it? Um, my membership is in the mainstream church in a place called Colac, which is an hour and a half drive from here. Um, I, I, I believe God sent me there for a reason. And basically, it's where my, when I was there, I actually, I end up getting, um, I gave everybody in the church a, 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 a USB so they could listen to it. But I'm finding, and when I'm driving along, I'm listening to that. I don't listen to news. I don't listen to anything. My wife and I have got a TV. The only TV we watch is every Friday night. We watch It Is Written by Gary Kent. I don't know if, anybody know, I don't know if you know that that um, half-hour segment. That's, that, that's the only television we watch. Other than that, we're in the country. We're really living country life. And how I keep myself in the love of God is I keep focusing on his word. I keep walking and talking to him. When I'm listening to um, the conflict series, I often will stop it and just start talking to God in my mind, and I listen. And um, I, when I'm going to do anything, I will actually pray, and I pray as I'm driving along. Um, I basically, uh, that's how I keep myself in love with God. And when I when I can feel and so hear different thoughts come in my head, look this or do that or try to get something else in my, maybe an old song comes into my head that I knew longer. I just get rid of them by basically singing a hymn that I know or I'll pray for help. And that's it. That's why that I, I, I know many, many songs out of the hymnal. Um, there's a few that I basically have memorized. Jesus is all the world to me. Hymn 185, I believe, in the hymnal. Um that was one of the ones I memorized a little while ago when I was in a church. And when I was in that church, I was one of the leaders in the church, and I got the whole church to memorize that song. I think I've mentioned this before. Um, what about you other people here? Lucia, Lucy, Angela, William, would you like to share how you keep yourself in the love of God? I try, try to hear his voice. I try to be open to hear his voice, and I've been getting a lot of rebukes, but also a lot of encouragement lately. 
Yes, it's it's very interesting. I think it's something. Okay, I know um, there are many spirits out there, and again, it's something that I I, I was I, I was actually I was happy to hear you say that the other day, Angela, because I get the same thing. Oh yeah, no, no, it's not the, that's not the God. You know, there's so many people who will condemn and pull you down, but you know, I'm not telling them that I'm anything special. I I I when I listen to um, the the conflict series. God is talking to His people all the time, so you know I, I and I'm not here to boast about it. I'm basically here to sort of say, well, this is what you can do. Um, I've got many, well, I've, I've got many, many stories of of people. I, I make sure maybe I'll share one. I'll share one of uh, my la- a lady, um, beautiful lady. I, I did some work for uh, for her. I, I've done work for this lady's grandmother. She's not here with us now. Um, Jean, her name was Jean Simpson. Now, I went to Jean Simpson's house because she was in a, a retirement village and she was having trouble with her eyes. She couldn't see properly. So she sent, she got me to go and uh, her, her granddaughter got me to go and put some lights in for her. And I had to put some lights that were extra specially bright so she could see. And when I got there, basically, um, I, 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 I'm probably a fanatic. I always talk about religion and God and how God is leading us. And basically, and, and she now... I had to go backwards and forwards from her shop, from her house twice because I was pass not supplied and then pass was wrong. And the second time I was coming back to that place, I thought to myself, geez, this Jean seems to really enjoy what I'm talking to about the religion. I thought maybe I should ask her if she wants to come to church with me because I was attending a church just around the corner from her place at the time in Werribee. And, uh, you know, I walked in the door. The first thing she asked me, she said, Felix, do you think I can come and sh- uh, come to church with you? I've never heard people talk about religion like you before. Anyhow, Jean Simpson's story was she was married for 50 years. Her, her husband died. And she was devastated. She's walking through her house and something in her head said, go in the room on the right. And she went straight up the hallway. Second time she's walking up the, in the house, something in her head said, go in the room on the right. She went off to the room on the left. Third time she's coming through the house. And these are her own words. This is what she told me. Um, and she's coming through the third time, and again, that's the voice. And he said, what keeps telling me to go in the room on the right? So she went into the room on the right, and there on the, on the, on the table was her Bible open to Psalm 121, and it had six, sorry, it, was, it had six inches of light coming out of the Bible, and it was open to Psalm 121. And I think you probably all know Psalm 121. I will lift my eyes upon the hills from when come my help. It was exactly what she needed at that time. And this is the God we serve. I've got many stories because people have been sharing. And I, like, and, you know, I talk to people about religion. It's amazing how it's not the sort of thing you have a conversation about. I can talk about the weather. I can talk about sport. When you start talking about religion, people think you're a bit odd. But we are odd. Right. We're very special people. And this is why I'm, I don't care. I'm happy that because I talk to people standing in a line because I think to myself, if I don't talk to them, you never know, they might get run over and miss eternal life. Well, I can give them a chance of eternal life. What about you, Lucy? Do you want to share anything with how you keep yourself in the love of God? Well, you must be studying your Bible, reading your book, I suppose. But, uh, it's just good to hear. It's good to share. And William, yes, brother. yes, my brother. Thank you. I like I like uh, memorizing scriptures, and uh, also, of course, the conflict series i am trying to finishing the great controversy and but i i cannot keep myself focused on just one book so i come out on other books so i always being more than one book at the same time Amen. and um i of, of course song it's very important and i i love this uh, during the day even when i'm walking I walk from home. I can, I can stop and pray. So, and also try to to keep myself um, in the Bible studies. Yeah, that's what keep my keep my heart warm with God as I, I study the Bible, especially the question and answer answer. So I can keep uh, going one Bible verse to another Bible verse. And I thank you very much for the last week about Isaiah 28, 9 to 12. I'm about almost memorizing the this text. I really like it, and it's talking to me. 
Amen. Thanks, Lucy. That's that's basically what what I'm getting because I I don't just memorize like and I, I I know there was a fast program that taught people how to memorize and I I I, I enjoyed that. But now I find we need to be listening to God. God knows which verses. Like Isaiah 28. I know um, there was a lady called Terry Lambeth who used to always quote um, Isaiah 28 verses nine nine and ten. But I I never realized the significance of those verses, especially when it gets to verse 12. I'm I, I've got a friend who's in the Baptist church. He's one of the leaders of one of the big Baptist churches here. And I've mentioned to him about the, the Sabbath and he went to the church and, and he asked the people and, and no one could explain why they're not keeping the Sabbath. Uh, but now he's just dropped it. So I'm going to get back to him. But again, when I look at that Isaiah 28 um, and how it points to the Sabbath and how it, it, it not only points to the Sabbath, it points about at the beginning of precept must be against precept, not just precept against precept. It's precept must be against precept, line upon line. And then it points to the Sabbath. And then, you know, they would not hear. So I haven't had a chance to talk to him yet. But, you know, he's telling me how they're enjoying Bible studies. And I'm I'm, I'm, I'm tempted nearly to go down there one day when I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to be living near him soon. So hopefully we'll get more time. But. If we're listening, you'll see God is guiding every one of us if we'll just listen. And again, what you know, there's many Bible verses in the Bible. Which one do you start with? And it's a matter of God, which one? And he will show us. I always remember when I first came into church, and I think I told this story before, that I came and on my knees and said, God, I've got no hope. I just said, I, I didn't even know the Bible at all, but I've got no hope. And I, but I finished with my words, unless you help me. I got up off my knees, went to the sideboard and opened up the Bible, just opened it up. And in front of me was the verse in uh, Jeremiah 20, 32, 27. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? This is how God talks to me. Like it brought tears to my eyes at the times. Like how can I ask a question? How can the God, well, I know how. He's the king of the universe. He's the Lord of Lord, omnipotent and omnipresent. He can do anything and everything, but it just brought tears to my eyes because I'm saying there's no hope. And he's saying, behold, I'm the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? So what I'm trying to get through to people, and it's, and it's something, you know, you can people can mock and whatever, but this is a one-on-one -on -one relationship. The 144,000 that follow the Lamb wheresoever he goes starts when? Starts the front today. Start the day you accept Christ. And that's what I'm basically, I'm pushing. And again, by their fruit, we'll know them. If someone's saying something that's not right, if I say something wrong, I'm happy for someone to say, brother, you, I think you have made a mistake there. And, uh, that was one good thing when I did or here. We, we, sometimes we didn't understand, but we would say things and, and we, 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 we accepted as brothers in Christ. What about you, William? Have you got anything you'd like to say or share? How do you keep yourself in the love of God? In Carolina, no, maybe maybe William's not with us anymore. What about you, Aaron? Uh, stay in, in the Word and uh, prayer. Amen. Sorry, I just realised the time's ticking by as well. Well, I want to thank you all. I said um, I think Theodore is back next week, but I'll I'll probably be sharing it anyhow. But uh, I'll, coming in here, unless God sends me somewhere else. But basically, I, at this stage, I believe God's pointed me in this direction. So. Um, Again, you know, we need to always be asking God. I, I, ever since I've been in a church, and this is me, I, I, I may be everywhere else is different, I always asked where God wanted us to go. And we used to go mainstream. And a lot of, we, we had conflicts with people because, you know, funny how you have conflict. Conflict with a pastor because you're quoting Alan White. He wanted the Bible. So it's so, so silly when you think about it. But anyhow, I'll just tell this story before we finish. We, we used to go to a local church, which is close to us, 15 minutes away. And the pastor there at the time didn't like Alan White. So I don't know why a seven-day Adventist pastor wouldn't like Alan White, but he wanted Bible and Bible only. And we'd go there and he'd like be a group of 10 people and he'd say hello to each person. He'd miss my wife and I and go and say hello to everyone bar us. So, um, and he just wasn't, and he was a pastor of a church. But anyhow, so my wife said to me one Sabbath, I don't never want to go to that church again. And I thought, okay. So I used to every Sabbath kneel down and pray and say, God, which church do we go to? And I would go wherever basically God wanted us to. And my wife at the time wanted us to go to a home, home church with, with some people that we knew. 
the Lambus and Bennett's. And um, anyhow, I knelt down this following week and prayed, and God, where do you want us to go? And I got the conviction, go to Werribee. And I thought, really? I said, well, if you want us to go to Werribee, you convince my wife. <laughs> so anyhow, um, uh, when my wife asked me where we were going, I said, Werribee. She said, okay. So we went there, copped the same abuse. Um, but when we were coming home, my wife said, I'm glad we went there this week. So it was worked out good. So then the following week, we kneeled down and pray, and I said, God, where do we go? And we end up home, home church. So we went there for a couple of years. Uh, but God is teaching us lessons, and we need to learn these lessons. And, you know, we have to be willing. You know, again, the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even, dividing asunder, soul and spirit and joints and marrow, and is discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. We have to understand this is the God we've got. He understands us more than we can ever understand. If we can just do our part, he will do his part and take us to eternal life with him in, in, in heaven. We'll close with a prayer because uh, we've gone past our time. We normally go. So we just bow our heads, please. Adieu, dear, 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 Father. We thank you because we know where two or three are gathered in your name. There you are in the midst of us. And, Lord, we thank you for being in the midst of us today and leading us. Lord, what beautiful readings you've given us from our Sister White's books. Lord, bless us and the Bible. Lord, we know you are a living Saviour who's in the world today and leading each of us. Lord, we pray for each person here and each person who listens to this recording and pray that you'll help us on this journey. So without you, we can do nothing, but with you, we can do all things. Lord, bless and help us on this journey. Teach us to know and do your will and help, help us to keep ourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Bless us, help us, guide us and protect us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.